Yidashaimase. Hello and welcome to Fataris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Fataris. This time once again for Shoot'em Up Saturday. And on the menu this week, we have G Mode Archives Plus Game Tengoku The Game Paradise. A simple port of a true classic. What kind of taste will it have? Let's get cooking and find out. From developer Jalico, Game Tengoku released to arcades in 1995. It will be followed up with the ports of the Sega Saturn, and then in 2007, we have this port, the mobile phone version. And don't think smartphones, think basically like your flip phone, as that's what this version is. Now in June of 2023, that version is available for the Nintendo Switch as part of G-Mode Archives Plus, courtesy of developers G-Mode and City Connection. Though at the time of this recording, it's only available on the Japanese eShop, so if you're looking for this title, you'll find it there. If you're not familiar with Game Tengoku The Game Paradise, it's an excellent vertical scroller that released in the mid-90s, and it's one I would highly encourage you to seek out and play, especially the recent remaster, The Cruising Mix Special, as it's truly an excellent shoot 'em up that still stands up very well today. And this version itself is an interesting way to experience the title as it's almost like a demake of the game itself as it's running on weaker hardware than what the Sega Saturn had available to it. With all that said, let's dive into the game itself and you can decide if this is something you're interested in yourself. So we find ourselves at the G-Mode Archives Plus main screen. Here you have a nice little uh, image with the title screen, and then a fun Easter egg here. The date that's on the cell phone there, 20, 2007, November 22nd, is the release date for this particular title. I do really appreciate that about the G-Mode Archives. Then you've got a blurb giving the bit of a description for the game itself, including its genre, um, but that is in Japanese, so uh, something to keep in mind. All, all the text is for this particular version. Pressing L and R, we start up the emulation and are taken into the game itself. So here we do have a few options. You can exit out the game here, you can open the in-game menu, and this will allow us to change background music, sound effects, that sort of thing, if we so desire. You can also look at the CGs that you've uh, unlocked for completing the game with certain characters. Uh, but there's also another menu, the emulation menu, that we can open up here. And this one will give us our controls, as well as the ability to turn on or off that cell phone frame. If you're looking for more of a full screen perspective, that's what you'd want to do. There's also a filter that softens up the pixels a bit. And then a, like something that's quite awesome, there's actually an online leaderboard for this title. So before we dive into the game itself, I just want to say I do really appreciate these G-Mode Archive titles as they help preserve games that would otherwise be lost to gamers as they're not possible to buy anymore for these smartphones and if you even if you had a smartphone that had it downloaded on it it's going to be really hard to keep a cell phone from 2007 uh, alive and working in this day and age so once we start the game itself we're taken to, um, pressing the wrong button there. Once we start the game itself, we're taken to this character select. And we still have all of the characters from the original arcade release, plus the one that was added to the Sega Saturn. For our purposes today, we'll play the game with Momoko, but uh, you can definitely experience the game with all the other characters here. They all have slightly different play styles and strengths overall. Selecting your character, we're dropped into stage one, and right off the bat, you'll see that the graphics aren't uh, super detailed, although I, I do think that they are more than serviceable for the game like uh, that we're um, playing today. So the enemies themselves are uh, fairly varied and uh, a pretty interesting examination of... Um, the game itself so we've got these arcade cabinets that are coming down that will fire shots at us uh, playing as Momoko we're actually quite strong and can quickly defeat the enemies we also have ashtrays which will come flying by especially from the mid 90s that would have been a common thing to see in uh, Japanese arcades and there's uh, other enemies like this bouncing cube throughout the course of the gameplay we'll also occasionally get the option to pick up options at the start of each stage there'll be power-up capsules to increase the power of our shots and additional bombs. Uh, each character also has a charge shot as well, so the shot is an auto shot. You're actually always firing unless you press the button for the charge shot. 
once the character charges up, you can release that and uh, kind of waste it there. But for um, Momoko, she uh, fires forward this uh, shadow image of herself, which explodes into an eye catch, similar to her bomb itself. And each character does have their own different bomb. So that's uh, Momoko's bomb there. You'll see that it's uh, like a neat eye catch and um, it's a pretty interesting uh, like system overall. The screen, the background does go black when you fire a bomb. Um, I'm assuming that's just a system like uh, restriction for the phone itself. Um, but each character, once again, has their own play styles, their own bombs, their own like charge shots. So it's really fun to play with the different characters and see just the way that the games uh, play ultimately like uh, differs. Uh, for Momoko here, part of the reason I took uh, her is because she's got that um, powerful heart shot, but in addition to that, those homing stars that we fire out are actually very powerful. So we already find ourselves at the first boss, the, um, not, not punch, this is like, let's see, the arm wrestling arcade machine that the evil mastermind that's taken over this arcade, Genius Yamada, has uh, taken over. So with a little bit of effort, we'll take out this machine and we'll be able to move on to the next stage. So the bombs in this case are on your left trigger. Uh, one thing that I really wish was possible was the ability to rebind your controls as uh, that's not really an option. You just have your base uh, control scheme that's uh, part of the G mode um, setup. So, uh, talking a little bit about this port, in my introduction I kind of mentioned that it was uh, felt like a bit of a demake from the original. So you've got a significantly less like 3D uh, action and movement uh, from all the from the original. Uh, like for this stage, uh, for example, if you're playing the original game, you have a neat little introductory section where you're flying around the arcade, and then you ultimately end up inside this uh, gotcha machine. Uh, that, we're, that we're playing through right now. Um, a lot of these enemies, well all these enemies are from the original game, but like some of the mini bosses that are in the original are taken out of this version. So that's kind of why I liken it to a demake. The graphics are of a little bit lower quality, certain elements that were in the original are removed for like uh, this one, but I still like think it's really neat to kind of experience uh, this title is if it were on, like, not say a 32-bit system, but maybe like a 16-bit system, although e even like that feels like it's a little bit of an oversimplification. Uh, one thing I haven't talked about is the comboing system that's present in uh, the base game is preserved in this one. So when you defeat enemies, uh, many of the larger enemies will leave these eggplants behind, and if you pick up the eggplants, if you, as long as you pick them up within a s certain time frame of each other, which is actually like one second, and then that's when the counter starts counting, counting down, your point value will increase. And if you happen to, uh, uh, if you happen to uh, get new eggplants on the screen while your uh, combo meter is built up, then they won't be worth the 10,000 points you could potentially get, but instead they'll be worth uh, 46,500 or something like that points, a huge point value. And ultimately, like that kind of scoring is how you can aim for high score attacks on this particular title. And it's great to see that the comboing system is still preserved in this particular port. So we now find ourselves at the second boss, which, once again, this is a simplification of the original uh, boss fight from Game Tengoku. The, it's basically kind of this, like, uh, Nekomimi character that's popping out of this uh, field of um, plushies in this uh, UFO catcher game and ultimately launching them down at us uh, as they fire shots. So the faster we can take them out, the faster we'll be able to get to her weak point, which is her bell. It, uh, momentarily you'll see that it like, opens up as a question mark. That's when we can get our shots in, and ultimately, boom. So this game <laughs> does have um, a timeout system. So if you don't have the power to defeat the boss, or if you're not doing very well in the boss fight, it will ultimately you will time out on the boss and that will be it. 
And that's what we have for this G Mode Archives Plus version of Game Tengoku. Uh, as far as the minus flavors are concerned, a couple big things are the sound effects, like uh, with all of the cell phone titles that are ported, ported here, are, genu are generally like uh, pretty weak. There's a lot of sound design, especially character um, sound bites from the original game, and whether or not you like those, those are missing from this version. And there's also, of course, the graphical downgrades. So this stage, for example, we're fighting music notes rather than the lyrics to the song that she's singing in the background. Um, you can hear the entire song like if you uh, choose not to go and shoot the notes and actually let her finish the song. If we destroy enough notes, though, we'll ultimately um, blow up the um, whole entertainment karaoke setup and uh, move on to the next stage. Um, another thing to note is this, uh, you might be able to take this as a minus flavor, but it's, some of it's just the port itself. Uh, the game is significantly shorter than the Saturn version. Uh, instead of having eight stages to it, it just has five stages. There are several that are um, cut out of uh, the game uh, just due to space and also graphical limitations. It's some of those later stages in Game Tengoku are actually pretty 3D graphic intensive, and it's not something that uh, the phones of the era would have been able to really render. On the plus flavor, so I just really appreciate the game preservation that's on display here, saving like uh, this title from uh, being like lost to uh, time and uh, the it's the gamers of the world. Instead, even though this uh, might not be the superior version of Game Tengoku, it's still a really interesting one to play through. And then the real part is it's still, even in this version, it's just a really fun, excellently designed vertical scrolling shoot 'em up. So, that being the case, if you're interested in checking out an interesting uh, title that, uh, well, might be one of those uh, G mode ones that's uh, more worth your time, then definitely give the game archive or the G mode uh, archives plus version of Game Tengoku a shot. All right, that'll just about wrap it up for this week's episode of Shoot'em Up Saturday. As always, I want to thank you so much for joining us this week. I hope you have a wonderful week yourself, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.